Kappa, shidooby dooby Kappa, shidooby dooby whoa, whoa, what a wonderful frat. Kappa, shidooby dooby Kappa, I know you're wondering why is that? Whoa, 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 whoa the fi, the new, the pie, noopy noopy, till the day I die. Day that I die, glory, glory. Glory, Kapaluya, I found my cake. In the early 1900s, African Americans wanting to attend colleges did so by enrolling in all black or integrated institutions. At these integrated institutions, their presence on campus was often ignored and they rarely participated in social organizations. In the fall of 1910, two young men, Byron K. Armstrong and Elder W. Diggs, came to Indiana University and met several other young black men interested in forming a Greek letter organization the group gathered on the night of January 5th, 1911. This significant meeting was the beginning of an organization known as Kappa Alpha Nu Fraternity Incorporated. In future years, the fraternity grew and added several other chapters. The fraternity had also boosted its membership to over 100 members. Over the years, the name of the fraternity had become an ethnic slur used by racist organizations, and as a result, a proclamation was issued to change the name to Kappa Alpha Psi Incorporated. In 1967, the grand chapter of Kappa Alpha Psi assembled for their annual meeting. Also approved at this assemblage was the founding of a charter of the Epsilon Omicron chapter at Northern Illinois University. The first members of Epsilon Omicron were initiated through the Alpha Rho chapter at Lewis Institute due to resistance from the Northern Illinois University administration. We applied for a charter much earlier than that, with the university first. The university turned us down. Their reasoning was there was already a black fraternity on campus, Alpha Phi Alpha, and why couldn't we all belong to one? That was their response, so that shows what racism was, racism was like in Northern at that time. During that time, African Americans gathered for different reasons. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and others led nonviolent protests as part of the Civil Rights Movement, which proved to be one of the most successful movements in history, bringing to the forefront the issue of equality for African Americans. But on April 4, 1968, a tragic event threatened the Civil Rights Crusade. It was on that day that Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. was assassinated in Memphis, Tennessee. Ironically, the assassination occurred just 20 days before the successful chartering of the Epsilon Omicron chapter. On April 24, 1968, the chapter became official. By 68, a lot of things had happened in the black community. You know, the black power movement, uh, student protest movements. Plus, you know, by that time, there were a lot of black students, more than black students on Northern's campus. And we had a pledge line at that time. They were pledging Kappa Alpha Rho. So we converted them to pledging Kappa Alpha Psi. And any brother at Northern who was not a Kappa, even if he had been a, even if he had been a member of Kappa Alpha Rho for two years, Suddenly he had to give up his office like one brother, he was vice, vice president. He had to get on the pledge line. So you can imagine how that was a problem. And then to top it off, he's on the pledge line and the pledges are still saying, big brother, he said, man, don't call me big brother no more. Cause he, they were around us and they, he said, how in the hell, is, you ain't no big brother, man. What the, and he tell them, man, don't do that. You all get me into trouble when you do that. But you know, it's hard to change overnight from calling a guy big brother 
to, to a pledge on your pledge line, but it all worked out. Our, our line was like a community and we kind, some kind of way figured it out how to, how to get things done, you know, and, and it, was, uh, it was quite an experience. We were the largest line ever in the, in the Midwest, maybe one of the largest around the country. When we were online, brothers couldn't understand it from around other chapters. They came to say, we gotta see this. Forming a bond was important to the members of EO. The chapter was known around campus for two things, their public image and their unity. It was just 200 black out of 22,000 students. 200 of us was black. At that time, we didn't think that uh, because of where we came from that we belonged. They made us feel like we belonged. I know we were men. We were definitely men. We no, let me put it like this, were no punks on, our, on my line. So they couldn't throw nothing at us that we couldn't deal with, you know. But in the end, it made us men. But the Kappa presence on the campus of Northern Illinois was, was strong. I mean, there were probably a hundred brothers on the yard at the time. And they weren't just t-shirt wearers. They were uh, in academic positions. They had jobs at the university. You know, they were uh, all going for their degrees. So I was impressed. It was a hell of a feeling because I never experienced that at being an organization of brotherhood and different in America. And when I went to Cap Carnival on that note in 1976, that experience was overwhelming. As the, the Cappers on the yard at NIU were, you know, absolutely, you know, top shelf. We ran the yard. Uh, we had a couple of very large events like the Sweethearts Ball that basically turned the town out once a year on, you know, on or around Valentine's Day. Uh, we had a lot of athletes, you know, who had played either basketball or football uh, for the university. We had a brother who was in the administration, John Wilson. So it was just a very prestigious black organization on the campus. You ventured around campus and you were seeing a lot. And you were seeing as a, as a group because you could never go any place by yourself. So it was always at least two or more of us together. We pretty much dominated. I mean, everybody knew who the, who the Kappas were. Still do for that matter. But it was, you know, we were very visible on the yard, clearly with, you know, 40, 45 brothers from, I was a freshman, a second semester freshman when I pledged. So there were brothers who were older than me that were juniors and seniors and grad students along with us young guys. So we were well represented all over the campus. Uh, with our particular line, uh, we had, um, because really only one of us were, was a freshman, most of us had established ourselves uh, somewhere in some areas at NIU where there were a number of people that uh, already uh, kind of knew us. So uh, we had some recognition. Uh, that um, uh, I think, you know, uh, bode well for uh, us in the pledge period, as well as the, uh, the brothers who were uh, uh, initiating us to. We were at the top of the heap, I should say, and, and uh, things for people to aspire to do. All the other fraternities and sororities, they didn't have a house. The black fraternities and sororities, so, uh, you know, it was always, uh, now we gotta go to the Kappa house again, you know, but. But that's what it was. You know, we, we were the only one with the house and we didn't mind sharing that. You know, that was it was it was it was for the black experience. And here we are, a fraternity with all these guys on campus, and you look at the other fraternities and sororities, yeah, they were close in numbers, but we far outnumbered them. So this was something that I think people saw and they said, That's the fraternity to join. I was at homecoming and a couple of young ladies came up to me and she said, Y'all really love each other. She said, I ain't never seen Nobody treat their members the way y'all treat y'all members. She said, everybody can just tell. She said, it's like a family reunion when y'all get together. I said, you're right. I said, I said, I said we just got that, that love, that bond that would never break. I think that we had um, certainly raised the awareness of the strength of the frat. And I also believe that when people were looking at us, they saw uh, some gentlemen who were strong uh, in character, strong uh, physically, strong emotionally. And uh, that's what I believe that people saw. I think that they saw uh, Kappa Alpha Psi as a very viable uh, fraternity.
From the early days of black Greek fraternities and sororities, the ritual of pledging became widely known. Wearing identical uniforms and marching in unison were ways in which pledges expressed their allegiance to their organizations. Our line came together, it actually started off with 30-something guys. I saw these guys in the room when we started pledging. And these guys that I really didn't know, because they were all athletes and everything, they stayed in different dorms. But I saw at that time the potential of the brotherhood that we have and the love that we have. And it's been, you know, 39, 40 years that love has continued. It's just uh, it's one of those things in life that you go through that, that all can't share, you know. It's chosen few, just the chosen few. So it's, it's, it was a very good experience for me. And even though, you know, pledging, sometimes people look at it as being uh, a degrading thing, I looked at it as being uh, a thing of pride. I, I like going through the process um, so that I would be able to be a member of, uh, of the great fraternity. And we see it uh, appear that we was very uniform. Um, we seemed to be disciplined. We was in unison things that we did. They saw us going to and from class with our pledging uniform on and also they saw us as a group sitting down studying for so many hours during the week as well. The, the pledging, it's a sense of pride when you're a scroller and when you're pledging. Um, I think it's very interesting the fact that you teaching you a sense of unity, being part of a team, um, the sequence, how you dress, uh, it, was, it, was, it, was, it, it was a great experience. You know, now that I look back at it, and it's no different from when I went in the, you know, officer candidate program as, as a military officer. Same type of uh, breakdown and build up to build a team and a unity. Cap Alpha size pledges are called scrollers, and um, we had scroller uniforms that were red and white that went um, diagonally on our um, on a T-shirt, and we had scrolls around our neck. And um, to the public, I, I don't think they quite understood what that was. They knew it was a college fraternity and we all march in unison and drop each one at their dorms. And during this time, we would run from where we was going or we walk, and then we'll walk through, um, we'll start from the library all the way down across Annie Glidden, we hit Lincoln. We started harmonizing and singing, and everyone in dorms, they would come out and look. They knew we were coming at that hour. They would come out on warm days and stand out there and cheer for us. Y'all sound good, and then they came through and they saw us do, we would stop and do our dance, do a step, and we would drop off and present ourselves and come through there. It's been working so hard to make Kappa, been working, serving a time. And we kept on and the harmony was so tight, they loved it. I'm trying, trying. Trying to be a Kappa man. I'm trying, trying, trying to be a Kappa. The biggest thing I thought about Hell Week, the first thing that came to mind for me was that it's Hell Week. Hell Week means that this is about to end. So that was a big deal for me that, um, that this would be coming to an end soon. And where some people, and I don't know how everyone took it personally, where, where some people may have taken it as fear, I took it as bring it on because in five days, seven days or whatever, um, I'm going to be done. I'm going to be a member of Kappa Alpha Psi. We wore a dog collar. We carried a break carried a paddle and couldn't lose it, took it everywhere we went, and we got more discipline at that time than we ever had during our entire pledge period. It was a thing that everybody on campus came out to see. So you was like a rock star. We had a ritual, it was called a Kappa Run. No matter who pledged, what year, what line, you did the Kappa Run. Um, you do this run and we go from nowhere to end up somewhere. We didn't know where it started and we had no idea where it was going in. And one thing we knew when we saw the dorms, 
we was close to the campus now, so it couldn't be too much longer before we're done with it. I was playing football at the time, so that was good for me. The task was very challenging. You didn't want to stop, that's for sure. Tis the final step to cross those burning sands. Oh, Black fraternities and sororities dissolved pledging altogether and replaced it with a membership intake process. This signaled the end of public pledging. For me, uh, 30 years gathering together is, is that uh, I'm seeing people that, that I was in college with and now to see them how they've grown and become professionals. And so this is more than just a party to me. This is brotherhood bonding again, just talking, reminiscing of old times. And just, it's just good for me to be here. Uh, me being a pastor, I hadn't been to any capital functions in, in almost 20 some plus years. And this is the second time the one that I went to Founders Day and then this one, 30 year reunion. So it's fantastic for me to be here. Um, someone advised me a long time ago as a kid, hold on to your memories, because as you get older, that's all you have. So I enjoy seeing the brothers. We're not getting any younger. So these events are very important to me. So I try to, if I get advance notice, I try to make sure I can schedule it so I can get here. As they hit the 30, I think every year, you know, somebody's gonna hit 30 for the most part. So I would just like to see where the older ones is 34 years, 35, 40 years, coming to 10, everyone's 30th. And yeah. then when we have our, our 45th in a couple of years up at EO, then you know we can, everyone else can uh, celebrate that because that's where it started. That was the best decision that we made to, to make them 24. Because as you know, today at this picnic, most of them are here today. And they definitely in the capital, 40 some years later. This is great. This is, uh, this is a reunion. You know, seeing brothers like yourself that I haven't seen in years, uh, it's always good to come back. You know, this is, you know, home for me. And, um, you know, I, I always represent EO wherever I'm at. And now I'm in Atlanta, Georgia. But I'm always, I mean, people tell me what frat, Kappa Alpha Psi, EO chapter. So uh, this, is, this is homecoming for me. Epsilon Omicron still has its bond because we're all here. I mean, we have some uh, bad moments and we still have bad moments, but we're still a chapter. When you see everybody, everybody's a little older, a little fatter, a little grayer, a little balder, as some people may be, but you know, you remember how much, uh, how, how great those times were. And I don't live in the past, but the times continue to get better as we get older. It's like, it's like a family reunion with your closest family. You know, you know, some brothers you see regularly, some you don't see very often, but when you see them, it's like, you know, you just saw them yesterday. Nothing ever changes. The bond is, is tighter and it grows because, you know, as new brothers come along, the bond just gets stronger, it gets bigger, and it's just one big family. I mean, the, the brothers are my best friends. Down my Kappa King. 
said a hand me down my cap cane. I said a hand me down my cap cane. I'm gonna take a stroll one day down cap Tell them about the colors we all wear that crimson and cream. Oh, yeah. I said we all wear that crimson and cream. I said we all wear. I said we all wear. Crimson and cream, I'm gonna take a stroll one day down Kappa Lane. Tell them how we walk now. We all stare to the left and to the right. Oh, yeah. I said we all stare. To the left and to the right. I said we all stare. I said we all stare. To the left and to the right. I'm gonna take a stroll one day down a Kappa Lane. Tell them about the reason. Fine new pie is the reason why. Oh, yeah. I said a fine new pie is the reason why. I said a fine new pie. I said a fine new pie. Take a stroll one day down Kappa Lane. I'm gonna take a stroll one day down Kappa Lane. I'm gonna take a stroll one day.